There's a tool in circulation panel that we haven't talked about that much. So this time we will explore ramp tool in depth, covering its basic functionality and features. Let's start with creating one. I'm going to just click on this ramp and in the properties section, you can see all of its options. One of the most important parts is this constraint section, which you can set the base and the top level of your ramp. So in this part, you can set it on base level. You can set an offset for it from the base, and then you can set the top level and a offset for its top. After that, we have this graphic section, which we are going to talk about in a few seconds. And then we have this width, which you can set the width of your ramp. Then for creating your ramp, for drawing it, for sketching it, we can go to this part. In here, we have two different options for creating it. One is the line and the other one is the center end. With this straight line, you can just simply create your ramp wherever you want. In here, you can see that if I move my mouse in here, you can see 48 meter is remaining. But if I click on this part, you can see that it is 36 meter. This means that you need to continue creating ramp to reach to the level you want with the slope that you have set before. That is set by default, but we are going to see how we can change it. For now, if you want to continue, you can click on this part and continue creating the rest of your ramp. If I click on this part right now, you can see that this remaining number will change. And then I'm going to click on this part, create it again. In here, another one. And now it is finished. Did you notice that we create the ramp started from this point? to here and we didn't create it, this landing so this means that the length of your ramp is exactly from this point to here and from this part to here lands are not included in this remaining value in this part or in the overall length this is because landings are flat and you don't have any slope on those parts so you need to keep this in mind when you are creating different parts now we can hit finish if we go to 3d view we can see the ramp in here and let's for example go to this back view in this part we can see that it starts from the first level exactly and it ends in the second level with the slope that we default we had in the edit type another way that we can create a ramp is with this start and arc which is honestly really hard to create or even control. I'm going to create the first one in this part and to continue with the rest of it, I'm going to, for example, click on here and create something like this. Okay, now if we hit finish, we can go to 3D view and we can see some parts of the ramp. Let's go to back. It starts from here and it's not reaching to the second level. Since it is very hard to create, there is also another way that you can create the ramp you want. So I'm going to click on this ramp again and instead of creating them with these and then just moving them around, moving their lines around, I'm going to click on this boundary and hopefully it gives you a little bit more options. So with this, you can use this pick line and if you have created the shape of your ramp before, you can use it for creating it in here. For example, you can use this start and radius. In this part, I'm going to create a boundary line like this. You can see the remaining part. And then I'm going to use this peak line with, let's say, 5 meter offset. I'm going to create another line in here. And then with this riser, I can close these two parts. And then I just need to hit finish. And this is going to be my ramp for now. Again, it's not reaching to the end, to the second level, but this is the ramp that I just created. If you have created the shape of your ramp, it would be easier to create whatever you want. Let me delete these two and focus on this one. I'm going to select it and in the edit type, we have a few options that we are going to work on. So first part is this thick, which shows the shape of the foundation of your ramp. Right now it is on thick and it means the thickness of this part. If I change it, let's put it on 30 and hit apply, you can see that it is changed. It starts exactly from the first level, but the foundation, the deck under it, it is going to be like thicker. 
or you can switch this to solid and all of these areas under this ramp is going to be filled with a concrete or any material that you assign to this part this ramp material you can change it from here then we have this function which you can set it on interior or exterior and after that we have this graphic section if we go to this first level in here you can see this up and if we go to the second level you can see this down in this part now that the ramp is selected in the graphics section we have this up text down text and you can active or inactive these two parts this down doesn't mean that this part is the down part this means that from this part you can go to the down side of the ramp and in this part again if you select it you can see that this doesn't mean this part is the upside this means that from this part you can go to the top if you want you can change these text so in this part i'm going to write this part on top for example and you can see that it is different and also you can change this down text too if you want to control the size of these you can go to edit type and from this part you can change the size and also the font then we have this material and finishes which is only for this part for here if i select it and go back to edit type we can control the thickness of this part for example we can put it on 20 centimeter and apply but unfortunately there is no layers in here obviously we need to have layers in this part we need to be able to control each one of them but we don't have it so for that if it is very important for you there is a trick that you can use let's go to first level and in here i'm going to just simply create a floor floor architecture let's just create a very simple rectangle in here and then hit finish in this part i'm going to just simply select the floor and with this shape editing i can turn it into a ramp i'm going to click on this modify sub element and then i will have access to these lines and also these points to change the elevation of these points or this line and turn this floor into a ramp so i'm going to simply put it on 1.7 and now you see that if we look at it from this view this part you can see that we have a ramp and you can simply control all of its layers and all of its thicknesses in this part this is just a hack that if you have no other option or you can't use ramp you can use it and you can create the shape and form that you want let's go back to edit type and to the last but most important options in ramp tool so we have this maximum incline length and this ramp max stop what are these and how you can use them in annotate i'm going to use this detail line and i'm going to create a shape like this in here something like this for example okay so this is a ramp right and this part is going to be the height of the ramp in here we have the length or the distance of the ramp then the formula for this the formula of the slope for here is going to be a slope equals to h divided into length right then if we go back to this edit type in here ramp max slope this in this gray note in here we can see that it says sets the value for the run x to define the maximum slope so maximum slope equals to 1 divided into x the other formula we have in here is going to be the slope equals to 1 divided into x okay now let's go to paint i have created them in here so it is easier to understand so let's say we have a value for a slope any value that you want and if we put that number in this formula we can simply find the l this means that we have found the first option on the edit type okay incline length and we can do the same for this part we can put the slope in here and we can find the x so let's say we have 40 percent slope how we can find the l and how we can find the x if we have 40 percent slope uh, this means that 40 
divided into 100 equals to h divided into l so l in here is 100 times h and they are going to be divided into 14 right so with this formula we can find the l and then in here we have the slope 40 percent uh, 40 divided into 100 equals to 1 divided into x so x equals to 100 divided into 40 this is the value for the second option to create a ramp with this formula what we should do keep these two formulas in your mind and let's go back to revit in here i am going to first show you this elevation so you can see the height first level is on zero and the second level by default is set on four so right now we have the value for the edge for the height it is four let's go to this part and with creating a new ramp in edit type i'm going to duplicate it with the slope that i want 40 percent okay in this part the maximum incline length was exactly this number so 100 times 4 divided into 14 i'm going to write the same formula in this part equals to 100 times 4 close the parenthesis and then divided into 14 okay and it will calculate the lengths for you for the next option for this one as i said we are not going to write 1 divided into x we are going to write this equal to the x value so x was equal to 100 divided into 14 in here i'm going to write this equal sign 100 divided into 14 and it will calculate the value for me in this part if i click on ok my ramp should start from the first level to the last part so i'm going to click on this part and then i'm going to continue doing the length of the ramp if i click on here you see that there is no remaining i'm going to hit finish and then if we go to 3d view we can see that it starts from this part and it ends in here now if we go to one of the elevation let's go back to this part and i can go to annotate and use this spot slope i'm going to create one for here to see it with percentage you just need to select it go to edit type and then in this part from this unit format you can change it put the unit on percentage if you want you can change the rounding and for its symbol i'm going to select this percentage symbol okay and okay now this is our 40 percent ramp and this is how it looks so this was everything you need to know about the ramp i know that the last part might be a little confusing but watch it a few times until you understand it fully and after that you can master you can create any type of ramp that you need i really hope this video was helpful for you and if you'd like to learn more about this circulation panel you can watch these two videos in here hope you have a great time and i will see you soon